So, good afternoon and welcome to Learn English Network in Kitely in Australia. We're in the same place as last week because um, I couldn't find a pub. <laughs> But um, actually, I maybe should have found a beach. Maybe at the end, I'll try and find a beach shot. But it's very difficult to get anything that's not on the road in Google Maps, to be honest. Anyway, um, last week, can anybody remember the question I posed to you at the end of last week's session? The question that was... When might you expect to hear with a bloody hair, are you? <laughs> exactly. What's that got to do with Australian business culture, eh? <laughs> Where the bloody hell are you, mate? <laughs> so, Monique, did you have a... Oh, no, you weren't. Were you, April? Okay, I'll just post it up in chat. Um, this was the question. So, let me see. Okay. The question was, when might you expect to hear, where the bloody hell are you? Okay, Monique, what did you think initially on? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that before, and I, and I, I would say that there are mm, different situations or for, this, <laughs> uh, for this question. So one of them could be um, at work, you know, <laughs> someone really needs you, you know, and for some reason you don't... Uh, pick the phone or uh, no one can um, find you so when you finally appear um, someone uh, when you pick up the phone exactly so um, someone can ask that uh, question or even your friends you know uh, when they are looking for you and it's something that is uh, really urgent and uh, yeah I mean, you are required, but as soon as possible, and it's something that it's, um, yeah, I think it's uh, uh, that sort of situations when I hear that thing. Okay, good. Um, I mean, there's no right and wrong answer here, by the way. <laughs> In case you think, oh, this is a test. It's not. It's just, where would you expect somebody to say that to you? I mean, for example, your friends. yeah, if, if you've booked a session, yeah, with me, and you don't turn up, I might send you a message. <laughs> <laughs> Where the bloody hell are you? <laughs> Actually, I usually send the message, I'm waiting. <laughs> what about yeah. uh, you, Traum? When would you expect to hear or see where the bloody hell are you? Um, um, I, I could imagine if my child wants uh, to go to McDonald's, for example, I am... Um, I'm not around. <laughs> and then she could say, where are you, mom? Uh, at the moment, I am, I am, I am ready to go. Okay. She... Now remember, where are you means now. You won't need to say at the moment. Okay. Nobody would say at the moment. So where, just where are you? Because that R is in this moment. Yeah. Where are you? So they wouldn't say where the bloody hell are you then, Traum? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, she's, uh, she is expecting that we should uh, go there. Okay, so she's waiting for you and she's wondering where you are. But would she swear, would she say bloody hell? Where the bloody hell are you? Yeah, no, I, she won't. I Too polite, to yes. I, I, I would have been surprised. Um, I only know what you've told me, uh, but I would have been surprised if she'd had that. <laughs> Shiny. Okay, you would say it, yeah? When you miss somebody and want to see him, her, you'd say it? Yeah, there you go. Maybe you've got a little bit of Australian in you, Shiny. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, Shiny. Um, okay, Shiny, uh, remember, last night is last night, so it wouldn't be where the bloody hell are you. What would you have to say? for last night were you yeah where the bloody hell were you last night i was probably in bed or i might have been watching happy valley we we watched an episode of the most inappropriately named tv series 
of all time, Happy Valley. When it comes on, it's very good. The drama's superb. But when it comes on, I go, misery, misery, misery. <laughs> yeah, already in bed, probably. I'm a very, I'm a lightweight, shiny. But I was up at four in the morning, so. <laughs> and shiny, um, <laughs> if you find me in bed, I'll be seriously worried. <laughs> I don't have any electronic devices in my bedroom, apart from the alarm clock. So you won't be able to get me there. <laughs> so Shani, have you got voice today? You're typing everything. It's very exhausting. I'm having to be your voice for you. Yeah. Hey, you. hello. You know, I, I'm not so good at speaking. I, That's because, why you need to speak. <laughs> If, you, if you're good at speaking, you don't need to practice. <laughs> yeah, but you, you see, Apple and Malik and Hermina, they, they all speak very well. They know how to express their thought. I, I they didn't so used good. to. Okay. I, April was always pretty good, but she, Traum definitely not. So yeah. Traum wasn't always able or comfortable to take the mic, but practice, practice, practice. Yeah. So would you. you would you, have you ever said where the bloody hell are you, Shiny? Have you ever phoned? You said you would say it, but have you ever said it? Yeah, but not in English. Not in English. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I don't have the chance to 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 say that sentence in English. Oh, I, I, next time Zom comes to visit you, she'll like that. She'll like that. <laughs> Okay, April, what about you? When would you expect to hear it? Have you ever heard it? Have you ever said it? Uh, never that in that tone, actually. Uh, we, we don't use a lot, oh, in my family then, we don't use a lot that uh, swear words. Even once uh, it happened, uh, I went for a holiday with my son and uh, it was by by bus. So uh, when we uh, came back here in Antwerp, it was a, uh, after, yeah, in the evening actually, around 8, 9 o'clock uh, p.m. And I have, bef before uh, before we went on, hol on holiday, I already ha had an agreement with a friend of mine that she will, she would uh, pick me up uh, in the station. So I was waiting there, one hour I think, and still no Dominic. Dominic is uh, her name. Uh, I was actually upset, very, very upset. This illusion, this content, this satisfied, <laughs> bitter. <laughs> and, but still I don't say that, uh, because then I called her at home. Uh, seemingly she forgot me. So she did. She, she was still at home, and she didn't. She didn't. Yeah, and I said, okay, uh, then I will take the taxi. You don't have to come here. And still, I didn't say any bloody bloody things. <laughs> I just go, where were you? <laughs> just like, uh, you 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 uh, supposed to, you are supposed to to pick me up here. I was waiting. For, I've been waiting here for uh, for an hour. But st I, I was uh, quite. Uh, maybe, maybe you can hear in my, in my voice that I was upset. But, uh, but I wasn't uh, swearing or <laughs> something like that. <laughs> I was polite enough. I think okay. Uh, it was uh, me who needs help. So uh, why should I? Sw why should I swear? And. Uh, I will. I want to to keep the peace uh, between our relationship as fri our friendship. Then uh, our friendship. So okay. Uh, she knows that I was uh, upset. I think, and uh, she won't. She won't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> so like that. But, but we we don't uh, we don't swear actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. You see, this is the thing. Um, you're quite right. Quite often, in fact, just now from tough guy hi tough guy uh i received a message um tough guy um can you hear me can i hear you 
Yes, I can hear you. Nice, nice, loud and clear. Now, tough guy, could you just tell everybody what you just, the message you just sent to me? Uh, a message? Uh, yeah, you just, you just sent me a message. Saying, hi, Lynn, where are you? Yeah, hi, Lynn, where are you? <laughs> well, the bloody hell are you? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it was it was almost like wow, serendipity. Amazing. <laughs> I can believe it. Yep, where the bloody hell are you? But of course, again, tough guy said, Where are you? He didn't add the bloody hell. Okay. There was no bloody hell in there. It was just Lynn, <laughs> where are you? Where um yeah, we're here. <laughs> I'm always tempted to type out, I'm here. <laughs> You're there, I'm here. <laughs> Reem, what about you? Um, have you ever heard anybody say this? Have you ever said it yourself? When would you expect to hear it? Take the mic. Um, well, I'll warn you if the mic's not working very well, though. It work now? It's working a bit better than last week. It's there's still a little bit of feedback, but let's go with it. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, because the connection is not very good. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm uh, not understand the the, uh, the completely uh, meaning of the question, but I I understand it is when I miss uh, anybody and I really wanted to see him. I yeah, if you were waiting, it's normally, it's something you might say when you're waiting for somebody or you're, as April said, when you're expecting them to be somewhere and they're not, or you want, you know, they're somewhere around and you're not quite sure where they might be. Okay. Um, so. I mean, you wouldn't say to somebody online, for example, um, where are you? Just like that. OK, you might say, where are you speaking from? Or you might add that bit traumatic. Where are you at the moment? Yeah. Um, sometimes in sessions, especially in the past, I had to ask people where they were because you could tell they were somewhere either in the middle of the street or in their car, which case I would disconnect them. Um, sometimes in an internet cafe. So I say, oh, where are you calling from? But where are you on its own means I'm expecting you. Yeah, Where are you? And in Australia, they don't... Th yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, so in Australia, they're very likely to add this, what we consider something impolite, something like swearing, okay? Where the bloody hell are you? Okay, tough guy. Um, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about last week's question that I posed to everybody. Um, which is, um, do you think it's different? Where the bloody hell or where the hell are you? Yeah, I do. I do. I'll, I'll, dis I'll explain why in a minute, but it's a good question, Shiny. Do you think there's a difference between where the bloody hell are you or where the hell are you? Okay. Tough guy, when might you expect to hear that? Would you ever hear it? Have you ever said it? Would you ever add that bloody uh -huh. hell? <laughs> Lynn, uh, where the bloody hell are you? <laughs> um, I have never said this. Uh, well, it's, it's, I think it's uh, not a very uh, good thing to say. I mean, it seems that the person who is saying this, that person is being who? Right? To the other person, to the, uh, what do you call that? To the uh, interlocutor, right? The the yeah, as so, I said, as I said to yeah, you on right. the forum, nobody ever calls you that. <laughs> if the person you're speaking to said that, you would think they're rude. We say more, where yeah. in God's name are you? It still shows impatience that April. Where are you is slightly impatient. And the more you add into it, where the hell are you? 
that's impatient and rude. Where in God's name are you? Impatient and rude. Where the bloody hell are you? Depends where you come from. Um, my avatar seems weird. Oh yeah, it seems to be having a little fit. It sometimes happens when I'm uh, clicking around. <laughs> it normally means my mouse is outside the um, area. And so my, my avatar is trying to see where to look and it can't find where to look because it's not in, my mouse is in another window. <laughs> okay, but tough guy, you make a good point. Yeah, you consider it rude. In fact, all of you seem to think it would be considered rude. Well, the prop, this is a problem people can face when they go to Australia. Okay, um, in that it's not conceived, it's not perceived as being rude in Australia. OK. Um, Humour and swearing go hand in hand and they're really important in Australian culture. Uh, they're part of everyday life and people who lack a sense of humour are pitied. OK. <laughs> and Australian humour can be pretty rough. OK. So whereas it would be considered impolite, it's not considered impolite in Australia, unless you're a very sensitive little snowflake. Um, but uh, it's just a general, they don't even think about saying it. I mean, bloody hell is, is a adjective. <laughs> it's just a normal word. Same in your country. Monique, take the mic. Explain. Um, <laughs> I don't know I can explain this, but it's true. Because uh, especially uh, among friends and uh, and also, when it comes to colleagues, or it's very common, you know. We, so we mix the, some rude words, you know. Even, oh, I, I think even my my parents they are used to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but it's very common. And uh, it's not about that I'm just uh, maybe uh, treating bad someone, you know. But um, but maybe not. Uh, I mean, when I say my parents, I mean they can deal with that. They can. Uh, listen um, to me saying that, but I, of course, I, I have, I must care about the words that I used with them, you know, I mean, when I'm talking to them. It's, okay, uh, now, I can uh, remember the first time but, I ever, yeah, yeah. yeah, the first time I ever heard my mother swear, I nearly passed out of shock, honestly, um, but it changed as time as I grew up, she would accept, there are certain words she would not accept at all, and there are certain words I don't accept, um, but they're creeping into popular culture. It's horrible because they're, they're words that are generally relating to parts of the female anatomy, and to me, I don't think they should be turned into swear words, <laughs> especially negative ones. <laughs> But yeah, no, I was a bit surprised when you said my parents, but you mean they're like, they're used to hearing it. They don't react negatively when they hear somebody. Oh, they can, they cannot do anything. Ah, okay. <laughs> so I think that they gave up. You yeah. Know, like, don't say that. Oh my God. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay, yeah, whatever. Give up. You know, <laughs> whatever. <just> grown ups. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's gone beyond that in Australia in that it is just a word. Bloody hell is just a word. Um, lots of other um, even the F word is generally thrown around in Australia, uh, but bloody bloody is not considered a swear word at all. It's a little bit like the SH1T word in Germany. It's not considered a swear word. Scheiß is the German word and they use it all the time. That is scheiß and it's so harsh to me. Uh, you know, I'd never call something shit, um, but they do say it and it's meaningless, just a description. Yeah, it's rubbish is their equivalent to das ist scheiß. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> well, it's true, Traum. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, well, they're right. It I, is I, just a word. Yes. Go on, Traum. I hate, I hate this word thing, really. But it happens to me also from time to time. When, when something doesn't go straight, it can happen that I also say it. But in <laughs> fact, it's an it's a, a, it's a ugly word. Or that, I uh, agree. I agree, but I hear it all the time, even in shops, even from polite people that I know, they don't think twice about it. And it's the same in Australia. Okay, this might be a shock to you, it might not. But where the bloody hell are you is a slogan. Now, do you know, do you understand what I mean by a slogan? Yeah. 
Yep. Okay, that's one. <laughs> it's easier to say bad words in other languages or in another language. Yeah, that's true. The Welsh all swear in English. There are no Welsh swear words. I have been reliably informed. I'm not a Welsh speaker. But um, when they swear, it's in English, not in Welsh. <laughs> okay, so um, tough guy, do you understand what I mean by a slogan? Yes. Yes, good, good. April, you know what a slogan is? Shiny? Maybe. Yeah. Reem? You do, but you have to explain it. Well, I think Monique just explained it with an example. Examples are just do it as, does anybody know whose slogan that is? Monique, you wrote it. Do you know who? Uh, Nike. Nike. Yeah, Nike. Yep. I never know. Is it Nike or Nike? I always say Nike. But yes, um, uh, it's they their use slogan. Both. I don't know why, but yeah, that's weird. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it's basically used in advertising. It's a, it's a short um, sentence or phrase that they use in advertising, and you begin to associate those words with that product. Nike's "Just Do It" is very popular because people use it in everyday language now. Yeah, and it's spelt a sporting term, but you can use it in all sorts of things. Um, I mean, just do it is an imperative and it might be rude. Uh, just do it, as in do what I tell you to do. But uh, because it's been, <laughs> been turned into a slogan, you know, people can use it with almost impunity. <laughs> um, Reem, as log, what does that mean? Sorry, I've, I've lost you there. As log. A slogan. I think that's what you're trying to say. A slogan. Yeah? Okay. It's basically an advertising phrase. So, if you were to Google... Sorry, Reem, could you say that again? You've still got a lot of background noise, I'm afraid. Ooh. I think one of the, I mean, it's not so short, but a very famous slogan. Can everybody complete this? Not pick up, no. That's pick up a pick up a penguin. <laughs> of a Kit Kat. Yay! Have a break, have that's a it. Yeah. yeah. Have a break. <laughs> have a Kit Kat. Have a Kit Kat. Yeah. Um, I think it's meant. It's probably meant to be capitalised, but I'm not a hundred percent certain. I'll capitalise it anyway. Oh yes. Okay. Have a break. Have a Kit Kat. Very famous slogan. One of the first. Um, the one you're thinking of, Traum, I know as pick up a pick up a penguin. <laughs> pick up a pick. Uh, oh gosh. Pick up a penguin. A uh, penguin is a chocolate bar in the UK. Pick up a pick up a penguin. Um, <laughs> Beans means Heinz is another one. I think, therefore, IBM. Okay. Uh, Heineken refreshes the parts other beers cannot reach. That's not what I've heard about beer, but anyway. <laughs> I'm loving it. That's another one. Most kids know this one. Uh, terrible English. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely awful grammar and spelling. Donald. <laughs> yeah, Donald. <laughs> Donald Muck, Muck, let's ruin the English language. Absolutely. Donald McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> but if you just Google advertising slogans, and you've probably got companies in your own country that have these catchy, they're always catchy. There's, you know, there's some rubbish ones out there. Um, I think Jaguars is pretty ropey. Uh, was it Grace Space Pace? I'm like, what? <laughs> 
Um, there you go. Never mind. Try harder next time. Lynn is picking on me today. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I don't pick on you. I don't pick on anybody. Okay, so this particular phrase that I in, uh, ended last week's session with, where the bloody hell are you, was a slogan. Oh, can you imagine what company would use the slogan, where the bloody hell are you? Can you imagine what company, what, what kind of company, what um, branch they might be in? Any idea? Starbucks? Starbucks, maybe? Telephone company, maybe? S telephone company, yeah. Telecoms, maybe? A courier, courier company. A courier company? Oh, that would be courier very, yeah. <laughs> that would be a really good slogan it's, for it's a perfectly. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It's Especially for UPS. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> uh, any other? Pizza? Yes, that's a good one as well. That's <laughs> Okay, any any other guesses? Nobody's got it right yet. Mm. Oh. Chinese typing. The bank, yeah, that would be more where the bloody hell's my money. <laughs> <laughs> TV movies, money. yeah, Is maybe maybe movies, maybe fast food. No, none of those. It was actually the tourism industry. Oh. Okay. The tourism industry. Okay. I'm going to share with you. I'm hoping it will work. Let me just check the link because I prepared this a few weeks ago and these things can sometimes go. Ah, here you go. So here's a video on YouTube. So I'd like you to go and uh, pop over to YouTube and watch the video, okay? It's only um, a minute long, so a minute out of your life, okay? Yeah, it's a bit old, the video. I think somebody f filmed it off their television. <laughs> you feel bad? Why, why Monique? <laughs> I'll presume everybody's watched it now and just forgotten because to tell of, me. <laughs> because of her last question. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 where oh my am God, I? I'm just in front of my desk, you know, you're having fun. <laughs> so. 
<laughs> That's true. <laughs> He's like, oh, I want to be there. I hate so you. Very, very good to add. <laughs> but yeah. she says it really nicely. So where the bloody hell are you? It's really upbeat. Yeah. It's like, it's not... Where the bloody hell are you? It's not annoyed. And that's context is everything. But that's how common it is for swear words to be used at the workplace. And um, it's been basically um, put into law, really, that swearing isn't, yeah, swearing is allowed in the office. As long as you don't offend or bully, um, swearing's you know, just the way people express themselves. And it would be a brave company that tried to put um, a, a no swearing policy in place, although it has been attempted in Australia. Um, they have something called the Fair Work Commission and um, each case, it basically has to be looked at um, in context. There was a case, seemingly, um, this is just research on the internet, but there was a case of a Rio Tinto worker who was sacked for swearing at a supervisor and used the F word, telling him where to go. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> It's, yeah. Uh, is it serious misconduct? Well, there was a court case and um, it's difficult to know whether uh, this person got their job back or not. It didn't really come out with any. Uh, but, you know, it, it's it happens and that's how the law in Australia seems to look at it, that swearing happens and people swear as a matter of course, okay? Uh, Lynn, <coughs> uh, talking about, uh, about the word to swear, to swear, uh, to swear is also, I, I swear that I will never uh, take a stick uh, or take um, a cigarette or um, to swear is also meant when I say uh, bad words. Yes. When you swear something, you can swear on the Bible, but it doesn't imply using bad words. Um, if you go to court, I think even today, um, in our more... Uh, um, less religious society. People still swear on the Bible when they go to court and they put their hand on the Bible and they say, I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. And that's considered, um, you know, that, that I suppose they'll go to hell if they break their promise. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think there are secular uh, ways of doing it as well. You can refuse and promise I don't know, maybe it's on the Queen's head or something, I don't know. Uh, I've never been to court, so I'm not an expert on this. But yes, to swear on something doesn't mean to use bad words, but to swear at someone, that's to use bad words, okay? You'd okay, say you had the best... Oh, okay, let's have a look. Um, shiny, you've put... We would say we had the best service in the world instead. Yeah, but there's no humour in that. That's just bragging and boastful. And as we discussed in last week's, people in Australia, they tend to not like people who brag or boast. Yeah, but they prefer people to be self-deprecating. I'd be, I'd be really a hot hit in Australia, wouldn't I, April? <laughs> um, well, controversial because it was played around the world, April. I mean, it wasn't aimed at Australians. This is the problem. And in some countries, they did find it offensive. It was banned on the BBC. This was a few years back, admittedly. Um, but it was actually banned uh, on television, in TV advertising. And I think eventually it was banned in cinemas as well because it used the B word. Oh, my God, he's, she swore. <laughs> Uh, 
There you are. Um, the commission, this is the Fair Works Commission, um, and it was a legal precedent. Okay, here it is. The commission found it is not uncommon for bad language to be used in the workplace in this industry or other similar industries. Context. Okay. Um, so this guy actually got his job back. Oh, no, he didn't. OK, no, the deputy president determined the dismissal of Mr. Homer was not unfair. But they did also say that it was um, understandable and acceptable that he did. OK. So here's what they ruled. Again, this is in Australia. Don't try this in the UK. Where employees use swear words as adjectives <laughs> to make their statements more colourful, where employees swear in frustration to themselves or where employees swear in workplace that generally tolerate swearing, uh, in workplaces that generally tolerate swearing, dismissal for swearing alone might be too harsh, a sanction that leads to a successful unfair dismissal claim. So it is in the right context, completely legally acceptable uh, to swear at your boss at work. I want to go and live and work in Australia. <laughs> it's my kind of place. So the problem is um, intonation was very important in that video and it was nice and friendly, but it could still in other cultures be thought of as very disrespectful and inappropriate. Okay. April, why, why, oh my God, <laughs> why OMG? Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, about, because you said uh, you, you are permitted to swear to your boss. Swear at. Remember, <laughs> not to, swear at. at. When you swear at, at somebody, swear at. you're saying you bloody blah, 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 blah. Okay. But actually, still, uh, I think the F word is more rude than Well in this case I'll I'll give you the link um I'll give you the link actually to this particular case because it hit the um it hit the newspapers uh this particular case okay and it was the F word in, <laughs> I'm not going to read it out because uh, it was it was what they call the F bomb nowadays actually um, the F word, we all know what it is. Yeah. And then there's the F bomb you quite often hear. Okay. And then they're also talking about the C bomb as well, which we won't go into what that is, but you'll hear it a lot. And you even hear that now on late night television. Um, and so it's, you know, the, generally there'll be an apology afterwards. The TV presenter might say, um, I apologise, you just dropped the C-bomb. But people don't get sacked. Whereas in the past, if you look at a case uh, of Jules Holland, he's a musician, and he did a late night TV show on music, and he got sacked for dropping the F-bomb. Okay, He's back on television now. Times have changed. Very much so. But in Australia, times haven't changed. It's always been like that. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to share that particular link in um, in the forum, in the group, because I don't want it to be too open, because uh, there's a lot, of, but I warn, I warn you, there's a lot of swearing in it, in context, but there's a lot of swearing in it, okay? So it's up to you if you read it or not. That's why I prefer MasterChef UK than MasterChef Australia. Yes! <laughs> Good point, good point. Yeah. We're far more genteel, aren't we? <laughs> oh, yeah, I should have found some clips to compare the two. But yes, that's exactly. But you, you people don't turn a hair. It doesn't, you know, there's no outcry. There's no public um, 
complaints going through to the broadcasters. One swear word on British television at the wrong time of day, if it's before the watershed, before nine o'clock, you can get into real trouble. And uh, people will complain even after nine o'clock. If you say the wrong word, people will say, there's no use, there's no need for language like that. There's no need for such language. <laughs> Monique, you um, you said that's true, but I'm not sure what you were saying that's true to. Could you explain? <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's terrible. It's, it's out of context. So, like, I what was true? <laughs> what you said, but <laughs> no, maybe I was thinking about the. Uh, it's pretty common just to to use that words. I mean, it's not because I want just to. Um, to really uh, insult someone, but those words are there and we use them on a regular basis, you know? I mean, sadly, and I know that I have to change that, <laughs> but I feel guilty. <laughs> no, it, well, that's the other thing. I mean, obviously, sometimes we do it to fit in, okay? And if I'm with some friends of mine who swear a lot, um, then I do find myself coming home and I start swearing a lot. It takes me a few days to wean myself off it. It can often be the, the surroundings you're in. I tend not to swear because when I do swear, I want it to be noticed. <laughs> so I swear, I do swear. Ask Som. She was delighted when she heard me swear. <laughs> she was like, oh my God, you swear. I said, of course I swear. I'm not blooming. <laughs> You might have noticed I haven't got a halo over my head. You know, I'm not a saint. <laughs> but she was delighted that I swear. But of course I don't swear online. And there is a rule on the forum and on the network in general, no swearing. But that's only because swear words are often used to attack. Uh, they're very rarely used for humour um, online, I've noticed especially. People tend to use them to attack people and bully them. And that's not allowed on the forum. And I don't... I can't, I can't screen every post for content, context and meaning. So I just ban those particular words. You know, it's, it's a bit uncomfortable for me because they're only words. Um, but because of how they're used, I felt you know, that's not the kind of atmosphere I want in the forum. Now, um, In some ways, being sworn at in Australia isn't a sign of acceptance, okay? But how would you feel if one of your colleagues said this to you? It depends on the context. Ah, exactly. <laughs> Why well, you I mean, can you imagine this is a question? Very good, you know? And they say, oh, bloody bastard, you know, you're <laughs> so good, you know? It could be, you know? It could be. <laughs> Monique, you'd fit in right, you'd fit right in in Australia. <laughs> That's a compliment, <laughs> oh <my God>. by <laughs> the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly, April. That's Go wash your mouth out with soap. <laughs> exactly. That's what my mother says. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> exactly, Trump. Now, that's more extreme. That's why I haven't actually said it. I don't want to say it um, on the airwaves. Much more extreme, much more personal because they're, they're saying it to you rather than um, a general bloody hell but you know that it's like you're being attacked but in Australia it's not okay and the ruder people are to you it tends to mean the more they accept you and in in some ways the UK can be like that too uh, but in Australia it's that with with bells on okay um, it's humorous and it is almost a sign of acceptance okay Um, it's also used, of course, to criticise people. And as we said last week, uh, as we talked about last week, criticism isn't, it's like anywhere, I think. Nobody likes to be criticised. So context is really, and you said that, Monique, it depends on the context. It's very, very important. The right context, the right culture. And I would personally probably not use it because I'm not Australian. But if I were in Australia and I noticed this behaviour, I'd be less shocked or surprised. Oh, he's Australian. 
you quite often hear that as an excuse. My friend, my Australian friend goes, oh, don't worry about me. I'm Australian. It's like, you know, I'm allowed to behave as badly as I want to because I was born on the other side of the world. <laughs> ah, yes. Yeah, exactly. Shiny. Yes, exactly. Um, and it tends to be a bit blokey as well. It's slight blokey culture. What is blokey culture? Blokey. blokey. What is that? Have you heard of a good bloke? Do you know who would be a good bloke? Ah, he's a good bloke. Bloke, bloke, <laughs> bloke like a, a guy? Yeah, that's it. Oh. It's another guy name, bloke. Oh, he's a good bloke. He's a good mate. And blokey culture is sort of man culture. But it's not necessarily men because women can also join this kind of camaraderie. OK, but probably if the um, uh, Women's Institute of Australia were to meet, it would be less, uh, less like that. Although, you know, that said, uh, women swear too in Australia. <laughs> Just not quite as often. A little bit more refined. It's like mate, yeah. How are you, mate? Uh, and But he's a good bloke. So it's like talking about a mate or a, a guy, a man. Um, it's just another word for man, okay? You can call your friends like that, shiny. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yes, exactly shiny. Don't You don't need to use these things, OK? Um, I presume when you say my English, you mean your English teacher? <laughs> your English what? Your English book? Your English teacher? Your English course? I'm not sure. <laughs> my English. <laughs> uh, you don't can, need to can use I these say words. Something? Of course, Monique, yeah. In my defense, because <laughs> I know that <laughs> Chinese, I don't know, a bit, uh, I don't know, um, worried about my, <laughs> my language. There is something um, particular here, and it's like how when you have a switch. I don't, it's, it's not the way, it's not the same way I talk to my friends, uh, for instance. It's not the same way, for example, if I had to talk to a client, you know. I can be a completely different person <laughs> and, I, and I know that I have some experience. I think that's normal, you know. So if you're among friends, you can say hi, bitches, and you know, I mean, in your own language, but, <laughs> and or using the, the right words, you know. But when it comes to, you know, I'm making businesses or anything like that. It's totally or totally different, and it's like a switch. I'm I'm sure that we all have, uh, um, I don't know, mates or something like that. Or I think it's just. Uh, yes, I just want to be clear about that. Yeah, absolutely. And we do have different personas that we put on and take off. Um, I've always said, you know, I have multiple personality disorder because at work, um, okay. Not anymore, because when I'm at work, I'm at home now. But well, online, I behave differently to when I'm offline. <laughs> uh, when I'm out with my friends, I behave differently to when I'm out with my husband's colleagues or with acquaintances. It depends what situation you find. And you're right, you switch it on and off. With my family, I'm slightly different than I am with my friends. And um, if I'm with, when I was working in, boring old offices. I was a very different person. I was still slightly happy-go-lucky, um, laughing and giggling a lot, but uh, yeah, I was not as relaxed and informal as I would be with um, when I'm at home. And we're all the same. I've even got a telephone persona. I'm different on the telephone to, I, to how I am face-to-face. -face. You can be a good girl as well. I'm, I believe you. Ah, interesting, shiny. Thank you. Lovely. I'll add, I'll add that to the list in the um, forum as well. That's very interesting. But culture plays a huge role in these, um, in the decision of how to speak and how to behave. 
and um, we're very good at mimicking and fitting in and as humans we tend to want to fit in so we adjust our behavior accordingly Um, April, do you want to take the mic? Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so any questions? You're, you're very quiet. Have I given you too much to think about? Are you shocked? <laughs> I can't believe she was talking like that. <laughs> I don't understand that uh, mostly that American people uh, in every sentence, maybe in one sentence, there are maybe five, six swear words. I don't understand why, 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 why Ooh, do they don't, do don't. that? Americans, not the Americans I know. The Americans I know do not swear and they are wash your mouth out kind of Americans. Okay. Now, they're Americans, admittedly, who are living in Germany. Uh, however, they do not swear. And when I, my hubby goes to Boston, um, people there do not swear. He said, no, you don't swear there. No, 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 no. Uh, however, if you were maybe to go down to um, a hip hop concert, <laughs> swearing would be the least of your worries. <laughs> So again, culture and um, context, and it depends on the per on the person, not of. It depends on the. Oh, you've corrected yourself. Well done. Depends on the person. Yeah. I mean, I know, I have a German friend who went to work in an English bank. Now, when you think English bank, do you think what kind of culture would you think an English bank would have? This is quite high level banking. This isn't a bank that you go into as a customer. This is banking where lots of money exchanges hands and they set interest rates and they deal behind the scenes kind of banking. So would you, what kind of culture would you expect in a high finance banking sector? Traum? Yes, I, I also think even even the bank is in Germany. Mm -hmm. it's, it's English English culture in an English behavior. So be polite, formal. She heard the most disgusting swearing every day. She was shocked to her core, and it was general culture there. To I mean foul language, not just swearing, funny swearing, really foul language. Sorry to disappoint you and disabuse you, but uh, and I believed her when she told me. Lads culture, blokey yeah. culture, high pressure, lots of money changing hands very quickly, things going wrong very quickly, effing, being, blinding all over the place. Trau? I, I think it's up to the manager. If he is the same or does the same, then it's, it's really best. Uh, bad for the rest of the team. True, I, I true, think. but I think as long as they were making money and lots of it, anything goes. They're not bothered. Just make the money, make the money, make the money. It's only a problem. You've only got a problem in that kind of environment when you're not making money. And she was, bless her, she was a precious little thing and um, found it very uncomfortable and also found that she swore more when she came back to Germany. <laughs> Yeah, the new generations are different, absolutely. Culture has changed. Mod media is responsible in some respects as well. But they're only words, they're only words. Okay, so, um, <laughs> yes. April, yes? Yeah, that is also, yeah, like what I uh, said yesterday, I think, about the police. You expect, your expectation about the police, mm. they are polite, they are helpful, they are calm. But what we heard now about what happened there uh, in the that organization, that is, is not what uh, what we, our expectation, expectation uh, is. Yeah, I mean... Um... A lot of swearing. A lot of swearing, exactly, and you were disappointed, weren't you, April? 
<laughs> when you heard it. Yeah, very, yeah. very. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, is swine a swear word? It's a little old-fashioned, to be honest, Traum, but I think in some cultures you really wouldn't want to call somebody a swear It would be a, it's an insult rather than a swear word, okay? An insult. And it would be a very grave insult in some cultures. You don't call, uh, it's like Schweinhund in German, yeah, it's pig dog. <laughs> it's just like a ridiculous insult to me. But in some cultures, of course, it's extremely severe, okay? Okay. Okay, so next week we're going to look at some um, slang and that will end our look at Australian business culture. So you can be, um, I'll, it'll be like a little game we'll play and uh, we'll look at some nice slang. There's lots of slang, not just swear words, okay? Swear words are swear words. Um, but um, there's a lot of slang in Australia. They have developed their own language and so next week nice little relaxed session on slang and um yeah we'll see how that goes uh bring some with you if you think it's safe <laughs> we, we could do a little next time Lynn. and uh we should we should uh memorize some swear words and who knows the most of them is the is the winner <laughs> Yeah, but I'm not sure if I'd want to stream that one. No, slang, don't don't um, confuse slang with swearing. Swearing is swearing. Slang is just having different words for different things. So go out online, see if you can find some Australian slang words. <laughs> and um, what I'll do, I will read out some of my words and I'll see if you can guess um what they mean and then I'm, I, if you can't guess it I'll try and put them into context and we'll see if you can guess it then okay so you can do a little bit of preparation if you want to um, but uh, strine okay strine has anybody heard of strine I said to you do you speak strine <laughs> No, it's basically, if you say Australian, it's it's been reduced down to strine. So it's basically Australian English. And they are the other side of the world. They're going to develop their own words for things. They've got stuff in Australia we haven't got in England. Uh, and uh, that Americans haven't got in America. So just like the Americans have different words for things, um, so do Australians. There is such a thing as Australian English. Okay. Oh, Piggy's nice, yes. <laughs> well, everybody loves Miss Piggy, <laughs> including Kermy. <laughs> okay, so if you look up Strine, you can find some good uh, examples of slang. And next week, we'll do a little quiz on Australian slang. Okay. And on that note, I will stop streaming. And... Um, now, remember, there is no Google Plus session with me today, but there is a session with Marion at three o'clock on Skype. So if you would like to be added to that group, it's the Wars group, Wednesday Advanced Reading Session. I believe this week we're going, they're going, you're going to be talking about a film um, this Wednesday and next Friday and on Friday. OK, but don't. But it was the, this morning, Lynn, at 10 o'clock. Uh huh. Yeah. I was about to ask the this morning. Or, uh, we, have got, we have got an another session. Hey. Uh-huh. I've yep. got it down as two o'clock, but yeah, you're right. It got down as ten. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so it, it was at ten o'clock. You've missed it. Sorry. It must be Friday's session that's at two. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah, Friday at two o'clock. So oh, okay, Friday at two o'clock. Okay, good. <laughs> yes. Have you, have you created another group for uh, Friday's session? No, it's Sonia? fads. There's a fads group. Okay. okay. The same. Yes. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm there. Okay. No. Um, okay. So when Marion comes back, 
after her next break, it will be at two o'clock on Wednesday as well. OK, sorry about that. Yeah, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, then two o'clock. And then it'll be the other way around. It was two o'clock, two o'clock, two o'clock. But um, yeah, it does mean that I won't be in Google Plus um, this afternoon. So don't go. You'll just get a message saying, uh, was it the the webinar hasn't begun yet or the you know, it'll, it'll say something like two weeks time the next session <laughs> um okay could send me invitation to the group of the len book club in kitely um len book club in kitely is in the webinar um jam session uh and if you're talking about the book we're reading at the moment you'll just find that in the forum ream it's just on the I'll, i can give you the link you don't need an invitation at all uh or you shouldn't need an invitation if you're being asked for an invitation there's something wrong <laughs> but i'll give you the link to well done you the book section so most of the english book conversation is in the books and poetry section and this current English book is here okay ah oh no I've got you now in Kitely okay I've got you hang on I think you're already a member aren't you uh, bear with me yeah it's just LEN members group Okay, have you got it? So you, you just need to be part of the LEN members group, which I think you already are, Reem. Let me check. Groups. LEN members. Yeah, I used to run... Uh, I, sorry, Reem, I can't really tell. You've got that horrible noise back. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. Reem. Sorry, Reem. We can't. We can't hear you. Send. Send me a message in the forum. Okay. Okay. But um, there isn't an English book club group in Kitely. There's just the LEN members group. That's what we run the book club uh, group through. Okay. There used to be an English book club group in Second Life, but I don't run those sessions at the moment there. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I, I don't think it was just me. I don't think anybody could hear you then. So <laughs> have a listen to the um, recording. You'll see what it sounds like. It's, it's not possible. I think your, um, your connection's just a little rough. Okay. You're welcome. You're welcome. Any questions, don't forget you can ask in the forum. But next week, slang. And as I say, strine is you what speaking strine or the strine language is what you need to Google to learn a little bit about that. OK, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed the session. I hope it was interesting. And um, as I say, next week we'll be done with Australia and uh, and we'll we'll find something else to talk about and tough guy will get his session on uh, <laughs> the genitive and the possessive and we can have a nice argument about when the genitive is not the genitive <laughs> okay take care then bye 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 when I hear that thing. Okay, good. Um, I mean, there's no right and wrong answer here, by the way. <laughs> In case you think, oh, this is a test. It's not. It's just, where would you expect somebody to say that to you? I mean, for example, a session. Yeah, if, if you've booked a session, yeah, with me, and you don't turn up, I might send you a message. <laughs> where the bloody hell are you? <laughs> Actually, I usually send the message, I'm waiting. <laughs> 
what about yeah. uh, you, Traum? When would you expect to hear or see? Where the bloody hell are you? Um, um, I, I could imagine if my child wants uh, to go to McDonald's, for example, I am, I am not around. <laughs> and then she could say, where are you, mom? Uh, at the moment, I am, I am, I am ready to go. Okay. Uh, now remember, where are you means now. You won't need to say at the moment. Okay. Nobody would say at the moment. So where? Just where are you? Because that R is in this moment. Yeah. Where are you? So they wouldn't say where the bloody hell are you then, Traum. <laughs> yes, she's. Uh, she is expecting that we should uh, go there. Okay, so she's waiting for you and she's wondering where you are. But would she swear, would she say bloody hell? Where the bloody hell are you? Yeah, no, I, she won't. I, too polite, too yes. I, I, I would have been surprised. Um, I only know what you've told me, uh, but I would have been surprised if she'd had that. <laughs> Shiny. Okay, you would say it, Yeah. When you miss somebody, want to see him, her, you'd say it? Yeah, there you go. Maybe you've got a little bit of Australian in you, Shiny. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, Shiny. Um, okay, Shiny, uh, remember, last night is last night, so it wouldn't be where the bloody hell are you. I swear, and... Uh... I will. I want to to keep the peace uh, between our relationship as fr our friendship. Then uh, our friendship. So okay. Uh, she knows that I was uh, upset. I think, and uh, she won't. She won't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> so like that. But, but we we don't uh, we don't swear actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. You see, this is the thing. Um, you're quite right. Quite often, in fact, just now from tough guy hi tough guy uh i received a message um tough guy um can you hear me can i hear you okay. yes i can hear you nice nice loud and clear now tough guy could you just tell everybody what you just the message you just sent to me uh, a message uh yeah, you just, you just sent me a message. Saying, hi, Lynn, where are you? Yeah, hi, Lynn, where are you? <laughs> where the bloody hell are you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, was, it was almost like, wow, serendipity. Amazing. <laughs> I can believe it. Yep, where the bloody hell are you? But of course, again, tough guy said, where are you? He didn't add the bloody hell. Okay. There was no bloody hell in there. It was just, Lynn, where are you? We're, um, yeah, we're here. <laughs> I'm always tempted to type out, I'm here. <laughs> You're there. I'm here. <laughs> Reem, what about you? Um, have you ever heard anybody say this? Have you ever said it yourself? When would you expect to hear it? Take the mic. Um, well, I'll warn you if the mic's not working very well, though. It's working now? It's I'm working not... a bit better than last week. It's There's still Hello? a little bit of feedback, but let's go with it. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So, good afternoon. And welcome to Learn English Network in Kitely in Australia. We're in the same place as last week because um, I couldn't find a pub. <laughs> but um, actually, I maybe should have found a beach. Maybe at the end, I'll try and find a beach shot. But it's very difficult to get anything that's not on the road in Google Maps, to be honest. Anyway, um, last week, can anybody remember the question I posed to you at the end of last week's session. The question that was, 
When might you expect to hear with a bloody hair? Are you? <laughs> exactly. What's that got to do with Australian <laughs> business culture, eh? <laughs> Where the bloody hell are you, mate? <laughs> so, Monique, did you have a... Oh, no, you weren't. Were you, April? Okay, I'll just post it up in chat. Um, this was the question. So, let me see. Okay. The question was, when might you expect to hear, where the bloody hell are you? Okay, Monique, what did you think initially on? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that before, and I, and I, I would say that there are um, different situations or for, this, uh, for this question. So one of them could be um, at work, you know, <laughs> someone really needs you, you know, and for some reason you don't uh, pick the phone or uh, no one can um, find you. So when you finally appear, um, someone, uh, when you pick up the phone exactly, so um, someone can ask that uh, question. Or even your friends, you know, uh, when they are looking for you and uh, it's something that is uh, really urgent. And uh, yeah, I mean, you are required, but as soon as possible, uh, it's something that it's, um, yeah, I think is uh, uh, that sort of situation. What would you have to say for last night? were you yeah where the bloody hell were you last night i was probably in bed or i might have been watching happy valley we we watched an episode of the most inappropriately named tv series of all time happy valley when it comes on it's very good the drama's superb but when it comes on i go misery 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 <laughs> yeah already in bed probably i'm a very i'm a lightweight shiny but i was up at four in the morning so <laughs> And shiny, um, <laughs> if you find me in bed, I'll be seriously worried. <laughs> I don't have any electronic devices in my bedroom, apart from the alarm clock. So you won't be able to get me there. <laughs> so shiny, have you got voice today? You're typing everything. It's very exhausting. I'm having to be your voice for you. Yeah. Hey, you. hello. You know, I, I'm not so good at speaking. I, That's I why you need to speak. I don't speak <laughs> <words>. <laughs> if, Thank you, you. if you're good at speaking, you don't need to practice. <laughs> yeah, but you, you see, April and Mike and Hermina, they, they all speak very well. They know how to express their thought. I, I they didn't so used good. to. Okay. April was always pretty good, but Traum definitely not. So Traum wasn't always able or comfortable to take the mic, but practice, practice, practice. Yeah. So would you. you would you, have you ever said where the bloody hell are you, Shiny? Have you ever phoned? You said you would say it, but have you ever said it? Yeah, but not in English. Not in English. <laughs> Excellent. I don't have the chance to to to, to say that sentence in English. Oh, I, I, next time Zom comes to visit you, she'll like that. She'll like that. <laughs> okay, April, what about you? When would you expect to hear it? Have you ever heard it? Have you ever said it? Uh, never that in that tone, actually. Uh, we we don't use a lot. Oh, in my family, then we don't use a lot that uh, swear words. Even once uh, it happened, uh, I went for a holiday with my son, and uh, it was by by bus. So uh, when we uh, came back here in Antwerp, it was a, a after. Yeah, in the evening, actually, around 8, 9 o'clock p.m. And I have, before before we went on holiday, I already had an agreement with a friend of mine that she will she would uh, pick me up uh, in the station. So I was waiting there one hour, I think, and still no Dominic. Dominic is uh, her name. Uh, I was actually upset, very, very upset, this illusion, this content, 
to satisfy bitter <laughs> and but still I don't say that I, because then I call to her at home uh, seemingly she forgot me so she did she, she was still at home and she didn't she didn't yeah and I said okay uh, then I will take the taxi you don't have to come here and still I didn't say any bloody bloody things <laughs> I just go where were you <laughs> just uh, you you you, you uh, supposed you are supposed to to pick me up here I was waiting for, I've been waiting here for uh, for an hour but st- I, I was uh, quite uh, maybe maybe you can hear in my in my voice that I was upset but uh, but I wasn't uh, swearing or <laughs> something like that <laughs> I was polite enough I think okay uh, it was uh, me who needs help, so uh, why should I? Why should I?